that this is the last day of our Vacation Bible School, but we're glad that you are in attendance. We hope you've had a wonderful time this week. However, we got a great day ahead of us today. So this lesson is Jesus visits his disciples, and it is taken from John, the 21st uh, uh, chapter. Uh, so we, are, we have lots of activities planned for this day. In addition, we have a special gift for you. This is a card for a free kids meal at Chick-fil-A. It's in your book, book bag, so make sure your backpack, so make sure that you don't lose this part of it. Now, we know that this has been unusual uh, vacation Bible school for us. Emily and I are sad, again, that we did not get to see you face to face. But we look forward to the many activities that are happening here at Fort Baptist Church throughout the year. And we look forward to another year with you in June next year. So you stay safe. We love you all. Thank you for participating with us here at Fort Baptist Church. Take care. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Nick. And welcome to Truth Up, where we see truth in God's word and in God's world. You know, Nick, I have a gift for you. You do? Just for me? Well, not just for you. It's for everyone. For everyone? That's right. This gift I'm about to give you, you need to share it with everyone. I don't know if I want to share a gift with everyone. I mean, that's a lot of people. If you're giving me a gift, I think I'll just want to keep it for myself. Oh no, this is a gift that's so great, you won't be able to keep it to yourself. You will want to share it with everyone. Well, what is this gift you're giving me already? Well, it's not really from me. It's from God. From God? Absolutely. It's the gift of Jesus. See, Jesus died on the cross and rose again for our sins so that we can live forever in heaven with him. Wow, that is an amazing gift. Jesus gave that gift to the disciples, too. He visited the disciples after his death and resurrection and told them to tell everyone about him. I want to share that gift, too. It's time for the Rainforest Fact of the Day. Did you know that the capybara is a rainforest animal that is the largest rodent in the world and is friends with pretty much every animal? Really? Yup. Just like the capybara, we need to get out there to everyone, people of all kinds, no matter how different they are from us, and tell the good news of Jesus. Join us later when we see what happens when we put some pretty different things together. See ya! Bye! Good morning, boys and girls. I cannot believe it's already Friday and we're finishing up Vacation Bible School today. I've had so much fun learning songs with you this week. And I hope you'll keep your Bible School CD close to you this summer and sing these songs over and over again. Today, you're going to learn about how Jesus wants us to be just like his disciples and share his good news. You're going to learn a song called Jesus is Love. It is number two on your Bible School CD. Jesus loved us so much that he died on the cross for us. And we are called to serve our family and our friends and our neighbors and tell them all about Jesus' love. Always remember that Jesus' love shines brightly through you and for everyone to see. I've had a good week. Have a good summer.
Okay, give me one second, Pastor Gary. Let me just get a sip of my coffee right here. Ooh, that's hot. Ooh, love my coffee. Okay, are you ready, Pastor Garrett? Okay, here we go. Good morning, Explorers. It is so good to see you this morning. I know that you have had the best week and you've learned so many new things and you've talked about Jesus and, and how he helps us and how we can share the good news. And um, this morning, I'm going to put my Explorer hat on because I have some things to share with you this morning on our last day. Oh, does that not make you sad? It's our last day. Don't you wish this could go on and on forever? Oh, I know you do. So I'm going to put my Explorer hat on. This is the hat that my husband shares with me because I don't have one of my own. Okay, so this morning, our lesson is going to come from the New Testament in the book of John. And it's John 21. And our lesson this morning talks about fishing. Okay, so we're going to get to that in just a minute. But our Bible verse today is, But lay up for you yourselves treasures in heaven. And it's Matthew 6, 20. Now, think about that word treasure. What's a treasure? Oh, I'm sure lots of thoughts went through your mind. Lots and lots of thoughts. But this morning, I want to share with you some treasures from the rainforest. Did you know that the rainforest has treasures? And I'm going to share some of those treasures with you. It's in my treasure box here. Let me show you this treasure box. See this treasure box? Oh, this treasure box has lots and lots of treasures in it. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to get one out and I'm going to show you. This is another one of my favorite things. You saw me drink my coffee. Look at this treasure. Who doesn't love some chocolate? Oh, Hershey bars are the best. Did you know that the cacao bean comes from the rainforest? It's grown in the rainforest, and that's where we get most of those beans to make our chocolate. Just think if it wasn't for the rainforest, we wouldn't have this treasure. Chocolate, the cacao bean, is a treasure from the rainforest. Oh, I've got something else in here. Guess what else I have in here? I have something to play with. Look at these. Look at these little treasures right here. These are bouncy balls. Who loves some bouncy balls? Man, they can get away really fast. Did you know without the rainforest, we wouldn't have these? The sap from the trees in the rainforest make rubber. What do you think these little balls are made of? Rubber. That's why they bounce so good. Now, I know some of you like to chew your gum because I see you in church chewing your gum. Who knew a treasure from the rainforest would be gum? Oh, that comes from the trees. There's a special kind of um, syrup and sap that comes out of the trees from the rainforest that makes gum. But you know what my favorite treasure from the rainforest is? Before we started, I just had a big old sip. Oh, I did. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. This is my favorite cup. I got it from Disney. It's my favorite coffee cup. It's got coffee in it. I like it because you can't even see the coffee, so you don't know when you're getting close to having an empty cup. But look at this. Look at these. These are coffee beans. And they're grown in the rainforest. Oh, I'd be really sad if we didn't have these treasures. So those are some treasures that come from the rainforest. But you know, we have treasures here on earth too. Things that we think are very valuable. That's what we think of a treasure as. 
Let me show you something I'm wearing that I think is very valuable. Look at this right here. Look at that. That's a ring that my husband gave me. And he made a promise to me. And that's a treasure to me. And he's kept that promise all these many years we've been together. I would be very sad without this treasure. But you know what? These are all earthly treasures. And earthly treasures can come and go. I can eat that Hershey bar and it would be gone. I could lose my ring in the sand on the beach and it would be gone. But do you know where there are treasures that will never be gone? Let me show you. In this book, there are many, many treasures that we are promised that will stay true and faithful through eternity. And we're going to talk about those treasures this morning because I want to tell you about the greatest treasure of all that's in this book. And that's the treasure of life. Life eternal with Jesus Christ. So we're going to talk about that this morning. And we're going to talk about how we can share that treasure with those that we come in contact with. Now, I told you that our lesson this morning comes from the book of John. Okay. And it's when Jesus is visiting his disciples. Now, we know that Jesus is the living God. He's alive. He's in heaven. But we also know that he paid a very costly price for that. So we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about what happened after Jesus' crucifixion for a short period of time in between when he rose on the third day until he ascended to heaven. He was still here on earth. And so we're going to talk about that this morning. Now, let me start by saying, you got to think about what a disciple is, because this is kind of about the disciples. So when you hear that word disciple, I want you to think of two things. I want you to think of a friend, like a BFF, okay? And that's what the disciples were to Jesus. That's what Jesus was to the disciples, best friends. But I also want you to think about sharing good news. That's what disciples do. They share good news. So did you know, if you think about it, you can be a disciple. You can be a disciple right here on earth. So let's talk about how Jesus used the scriptures to teach us through his disciples how to do that. So, you know, Jesus had been crucified. They knew that he was alive, but they hadn't seen him. They hadn't seen him. And, you know, they were sitting around and they were so sad because they knew the price he had paid. And they knew that it was for their sins and the sins of the world. And their best friend was gone. He was gone. So, you know, they were sitting around. They were on the shore. They had them a fire built. It was late evening, and four of these disciples really enjoyed fishing. Now, Simon Peter, he was really good at it. Like, he was the best fisherman ever. Never went out and came back with an empty net. Now, I'm going to take my hat off because I'm done exploring for right now because I want to be able to talk to you about our story. So, Simon Peter and his friends were sitting around, and they were just, you know, they were kind of like Eeyore and Winnie the Pooh. They were just ho-hum because they were sad. But they also had hope because Jesus had taught them how to have that. And so Simon Peter is sitting there and he looks around and his friends are there. And he says, you know what? I'm going fishing. Fishing makes me happy. And his friends looked at him and they're like, that's a great idea. Let's go fishing. So, you know, Simon Peter, he got his fishing net. Now, it's a lot bigger than my fishing net. But see all these holes in it? That's what they used with a big old net when they went fishing. Because they got in the boat, 
and they rowed way out away from the shore. And they rowed and they rowed and they rowed and they rowed their boat. And then they got their nets ready. And they probably had several nets. And they were so used to fishing that they were very confident it wasn't going to be a problem. So they took those nets and they cast them over the boat. And they fell in the water. And they left them there for a few minutes. And they were like, oh, these nets got to be full. And they started pulling them in. Well, they started pulling and they didn't even have to tug. It was like there was nothing in them. So they pulled the nets back in and they looked at them. And there was nothing there. Oh, man, they were sad. They're like, oh, that's first try. Let's do it again. So they took those big old nets and they cast them back in the sea. And they left them there. And they said, they got to be full now. Those fish have to be in them. And they started pulling their nets in, and it was no different than the last time. And they continued all night throwing those nets in the sea and pulling them in. And not a single fish, not one fish in those nets. And it was getting dawn, and the sun was beginning to come up, and all of a sudden they looked, and they saw a shadow on the shore and they looked and they had pulled their nets in and they're like, oh, let's go to the shore and see who that is. And they started rowing and then they heard a voice and this voice asked, do you have any fish in your net? And Simon Peter called back and he said, no, we have no fish. We fished all night and we have nothing. Oh, we have nothing. And the voice from the shore called and he said, Take the net. Throw it on the right side of the boat. Cast your net on the right side. And no doubt they're tired. Their arms are probably tired from throwing that net in all night long and bringing it back in with nothing. Nothing. And they're probably thinking, Are you kidding me? There's nothing out here. We've done this all night and there's nothing. And so they looked at each other and they're like, what's one more time going to matter? And they took that net and they cast it into the right side of the boat out in the ocean. And before they knew what was happening, the net disappeared. They had a hold of it and it disappeared. And they started to pull it back in and they tried, and they pulled, and they pulled, and they couldn't get it back in. They probably thought they had caught the whale that swallowed Jonah, but that wasn't the case. And so Simon Peter looked back on shore, and he's thinking, oh my, he was right. Who, who is that? And Simon Peter looks closer, and he realized who it was. He realized that the man on the shore who had told them exactly where to cast that net, it was Jesus. He was there. And Simon Peter was so excited that he jumped out of that boat and he started swimming and he swam all the way to shore. And while he was swimming to shore, the others were trying to row that boat back to the shore. And it was so hard to row because they couldn't even get the net in because it was so heavy. And Simon Peter got back to shore and he stepped up on the shore and he saw him. And he was there. And he had a campfire. And he had fished on that campfire for breakfast and bread. He had prepared breakfast, a meal to share with his best friends. I bet you do that sometimes. I bet you share a meal with your best friends sometimes. And so Simon Peter, probably he's standing there waving at his friends that are coming. He's like, come on, come on, come on, come on. And they got to the shore and they tried again to pull that net in, but they couldn't pull it in. And Jesus told them, he said, go, bring some more fish. We're going to break bread together. We're going to have a meal together. I have some more news to share with you. And so finally they pulled and they pulled and they got that net into the shore and in that net there were a hundred 
and 53 fish. Imagine how heavy that was. Think about a fish. Now, when you go out in the ocean fishing, you can catch some big fish. They probably had some little fish. They probably had some medium-sized fish, but they probably had some really big fish in there too. And so they got it and they got the fish and they sat down with Jesus and they shared a meal together and he filled their hearts again and he reminded them of the things he had taught them before his crucifixion, that it was their responsibility to be an example of how to live, that it was their responsibility to share the good news with others, the good news that, yes, something terrible, awful had happened, but because that happened, there was a way to have eternal life. And there was a way to know right from wrong and when to do the right thing, which is always. I'm sure you've had a teacher before that tells you that character is doing the right thing when no one's looking. And you know, that's what Jesus taught. He shared all of his teachings and all of his promises that are in this book with his disciples. And those disciples had a job and they were very good at it. And they continued to share the good news. And you know, boys and girls, as we end this week, and this is our last lesson, we've looked at so many treasures from this book. I told you at the beginning of this lesson that the greatest treasure in this book is the treasure of life eternal. And you know, that's what the disciples did is they shared that news. They told everyone they came in contact with how simple it was that all they had to do was believe by faith that Jesus was the Christ and that he came to die for their sins. And if they would believe that and accept him as the true living Christ and ask him to come and live in their hearts and their souls, that they would be able to have that treasure of eternal life. And boys and girls, if you've never done that today, is the day. You can do that right there in your house. You can talk to your mom and dad about it. Or you can get down on your knees and you can talk to Jesus about it. And you can ask him to come into your heart and to live and to forgive you of all of your sins, which we all have. Because that treasure is a promise. It's a promise in this book. And God never breaks his promises. And so I want you to think about that. And those of you that have already done that or that are thinking about that, whether you've done that or not, you can still share the good news. You can be a disciple. Think about all those friends that you have, all the people you come in contact with. You can share that good news. Strike up a conversation. Conversations are easier for others than, you know, they are for some of us. And, you know, if you're standing in line at the grocery store and somebody says good morning or hello or, you know, that looks like a yummy snack you have there. You can talk to him about Jesus. That's what he wants us to do is he wants us to share the good news. Okay? And so let's think about that this morning as we close out this week of Bible school. And we've learned so many of his promises. And we're going to put our hands on our hips. And we're going to get ready to say our phrase from the week. And that phrase is Jesus helps me share the news. So I want you to do that right now, wherever you're at. I want you to stand up. I want you to put your hands on your hips because that shows lots of confidence because you know you can do it. And you're going to say, Jesus helps me share the good news. And you too, boys and girls. All right, happy Friday, explorers. Today on our rainforest adventures, we are going to do one of your favorite things, sand art. I don't care how old you are, everybody loves sand art. Now, parents, it makes a mess. I know this, I do it every year with the kids. What I would recommend is put down like a sheet of wax paper underneath or just a plain piece of paper. Um, do all this on top of that, it makes it so much easier. Everyone should have gotten in their bag to go home one of these uh, uh, fish here, 
uh, that says Jesus. Uh, this is actually one sticker. Uh, it, well, it's made of lots of little stickers. Uh, and we'll, I'll show you how to pull them off and put the sand on and everything. And your kids have done this several years in the past. They know how to do it without making a huge mess. Um, and, and I'll show you kind of how we have done it as well. Um, and I just, I started one here. This is a little bit of an example. Um, right now we have purple sand up here to show um, how this works. Uh, some advice on sand art is to start either in the middle and work out. You can do that. Start with some of the smaller pieces, depending on what kind of sand art you're doing. Um, sometimes doing the details uh, first works a little bit easier. Um, this one's not super duper detailed. One thing I would say is, you know, focus on maybe doing all the letters at one time or do the background colors all at once, something along those lines. Again, kiddos, I would definitely do this one with your parents around. Parents, it can get messy but they know how to do this without being completely messy. They've done this several years in the past. Um, also, this is a good one for afterwards. If you get little papers all over the floor, we've done this in the past as well. You have to pick up five pieces of paper before you go move on to your next task. <laughs> all right, parents. So these are stickers and you can see on this one, the one I started, all I did was take the J off, the S and the S here. Um, and I was planning on doing the E and the U in different colors. I just don't have any different colors right now. Um, but we'll go ahead and um, sometimes you might be able to take your uh, popsicle stick or your uh, uh, wooden piece that you used to uh, make your postcard. You might be able to use that to get these stickers off. They can be kind of finicky sometimes. But so I got my J off and I'm going to do the whole word in purple this time. We take those stickers off there. Keep going. It does help when you have fingernails. So there's an example of how you could forget to take that part off right there and it wouldn't look quite right when you finished up. So you need to take the rest of that U off right there and then the S right here. So we still have our background stickers on there. It's not sticky right there. All of these other spaces are sticky. So you take your sand and you can use a plastic spoon. I conveniently have this scoop here and you just kind of layer it on here and keep going. You can use as much as you have there in your bags. You should have three or four colors. We tried to get everybody some variety here. You may not have your favorite color, but you should have some, some there that you like. And just kind of pile it on. And if you need to pat it down some, you can. Um, here's a fun, interesting thing, too. If you don't want to use sand, you can, you can use glitter, but that can be more of a mess. That depends on how messy you'd like to get. Or you can actually use, like, sprinkles, candy sprinkles, things like that. Um, just can't eat them afterwards. That doesn't make it good. You can pat it down if you need to. And then you can either dump it right there on your paper that you're working on, wax paper, regular paper, parchment paper, whatever you're using. Um, or you can dump it back in your container. I have a container that's got enough room to dump it all back in there. So you can kind of see that some spots didn't get it great, but that's okay. Just add some more. You kind of tap it. You can hit it like that. You might be able to thump it a little bit. Get it all off there. And you can see that the Jesus now has purple all over it. Um, if you're not satisfied with how it went, put a little bit more on there. Um, it also helps if you have lighter colors, use your lighter colors first. And then move on to your darker colors. I think that's the advice it gives. I can't remember exactly. <laughs> Do one or the other. <laughs> Start with one or the other. All right, so there you go. And then you continue to peel off the stickers as you go. So I would maybe do like the fish's tail like that uh, in the purple as well. So that is your sand art. You throw all your pieces of paper away when you're done. And you can sweep up or just get your piece of paper and dump all the sand back in to their containers and potentially use them again in the future if you have any left. All right. Happy Friday, friends. We've enjoyed having you this week with our crafts.
Wow, what a day. You can say that again. After everything I've learned this week, I just want to tell everyone all about how amazing God is and all about his love. You can, Nick, and you should. God doesn't want us to keep his message all to ourselves. We should spread the word and tell everyone. My neighbors? Yep. My friends? Them too. My family members who may not know about God? All of them. God wants everyone to know about his love and all he's done. I'm ready to tell everyone I know. That's amazing. Now it's time for the science experiment of the day. <laughs> now Nick, watch what I did for our next experiment. What's that? I placed scotch mints in a cola bottle. Look what happened. Wow, that's so cool. Did you see how much energy it had? How high it went? How far? I did. That reminds me of how it is with spreading God's message. Our excitement gives us energy to keep reaching as far as we can to tell others about God. Yeah, and that cola got everywhere. Exactly. We want everyone everywhere to know of God's love because it's such an incredible gift. Why wouldn't we want to share? Well, it's been an amazing week. We've learned so much about God and what he can do and what he does for us. And now it's your turn to go and spread the message. It's been fun. See ya. Bye. Hey, explorers. Thank you so much for joining us for our virtual vacation Bible school this week. And parents, thank you so much for sharing your children with us. We know that this has been a different kind of Vacation Bible School than we've encountered in the past, but you know what? This was pretty cool, so we hope you enjoyed it, and we hope you learned a lot as Jesus leads the way in our lives as we are needing this more than ever in this day and time. We want to encourage you and we want to invite you to come back to Fort Baptist Church any time that you can. You know our fall festival will be coming up as well as our Awanas that will be starting in the fall. We look forward to seeing you again and we want to thank everybody, all the staff, everybody that had a hand in this different kind of Vacation Bible School. It certainly uh, took a lot more time than you would probably ever imagine, but we hope that you enjoyed it, and we certainly hope that you learned a lot. Okay, until next year, take care. Bye-bye. Well, thank you, Renee and Miss Emily. Thank you for all the work they've done, and hey, great news, boys and girls. Uh, they have, uh, Miss Emily and Miss Renee has already committed for Bible, BBS 2021. So we're excited about that. Boys and girls, can't thank you enough, parents, for joining us this week on this uh, very uh, different uh, Vacation Bible School. Bible School has been always special to me as your pastor here. Uh, but I'm so, so glad that you have participated with us and you got your book bags and everything, your backpacks rather, and uh, I hope uh, that you gain some insight this week on truly how Jesus leads the way. And you know what? We want to be Jesus for you. We want to be God's Word for you. And not just during this week of Vacation Bible School, but as we move, go forward. We're not done yet here at Fort Baptist Church. We're not finished yet. We want to continue to minister with and to you uh, in coming days, weeks, and even months and years. And so I hope you'll come be a part of our church, fortbaptist.com, uh, of course, is our website. You see that on the screen there. Uh, and so we want you to come be a part of uh, what God is doing here at Fort. We're not perfect here, but we're seeking to allow Jesus to lead the way. We hope Awanas will begin um, in the fall. We're hoping that. Uh, so be look forward to that. Other events will be coming up. Uh, just stay closer to our, our Facebook page and our website. Uh, as you see some great things coming up for uh, this community and our church. God bless you again. Thank you for joining us here at Rainforest Explorers Bible School. Have a great, great summer.